Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Weird Al Guide. Today's beer is a bottle of Eagle IPA from Wells. You may notice the rest of the Wells range there. I'll just grab the camera. I'll just show you quickly. That should be all of them there. Now, here's the Eagle IPA. I'm reviewing this tonight because when I was up in Bedford at the brewery I tried this on tap and I really really enjoyed it. So let's get it open and give it a quick review. There you go. The smoke there. Using my GBBF. Great British Beer Festival glass. Okay, the beer is pouring out. Nice golden colour. Slight hint of bronze, bronze to it with a a one finger head just dissipating. Not too quickly, but it's def you can definitely see it going down. A little bit of carbonation going on as well. I can get it to focus. There you go. At 3.8%, oh sorry, 3.6% should I say. Getting ahead of myself here. This is Wells Standard IPA, which they've now bottled. It's brand new in the bottle. So let's get the nose. It smells, it does smell malty with that classic British bitter smell you get. Slightly citrusy, ever so slightly citrusy, but it's more malty. Let's dig in. And that's, yeah, it's classic sweet malt. The first thing you get is the sweet malt. The carbonation gives you that nice tingling tongue feeling you get. It's not overly done. But the sweetness is now pulling through really, really well. Really, really well. And it's a pinch, just a pinch Hoppy. The British style IPA that's got brewed, a lot of them, Brains IPA, um, Wells IPA, they're all kind of 3.8, 3.6% in the volume. They're the classic British style. It's not meant to be a, a big American hop bomb. It's not meant to be full of citrus, really, really bitter. Um, it's a nice balanced drink. <coughs> A lot better than the Green King IPA, which I, I'll, I'll say that because I'm, I'm not overly keen on. I mean, it, the Green King IPA is okay, but it's just for me it lacks something. That is really nice. Now, the reason I'm doing this tonight is that Wells and Young's over the internet has come, over a little, come across a little bit of criticism of late. And there's a small part more well, that this this a small part of me which thinks where do I stand with it all? Where where is it that I stand with this whole argument with E numbers? Now this well is Eagle IPA. It has been brewed in the heart of Bedfordshire. Um, with a finest red tract accredited malted barley and natural mineral water from our well, sunk by Charles Wells himself in 1904. There's the red tractor accredited sign there. But more importantly, the ingredients in this drink are natural mineral water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. They're the only ingredients that go into this beer. Now, there's a certain 
very, very hard to, to get what I want to say out here without... I, I really don't want to sound like that I'm... Well, like I work for Wells and Young. I don't work for Wells and Young at the time. I'm an independent beer reviewer. But I just think that, that, that sometimes, because I've reviewed the whole range, I think that sometimes the stick that comes their, their way from other beer reviewers is kind of unjustified because you've got this drink there which is made with modern batter. There's no E numbers in this at all. Then you get the Wells Bombardier. Burning gold. Okay, it's in a clear bottle. But ingredients, water, malted barley, hops and yeast. Then you go with there, Young's London Gold. Bottle conditioned. Which again, is brewed with natural mineral water, malted barley, hops and yeast. They're the only ingredients used. Classic Courage Best Bitter, which was my second ever review, check it out. Ingredients. Oh, there we go. Water, I'll come back to this one in a moment. I'll come back to this one in a moment. I'll put that on the end there. Then you got, I read that earlier, I read it wrong. Then you got a bottle conditioned Young's Special London Ale, which is natural mineral water, malted barley, hops and yeast. So these beers here, on the left hand side, nice bottle caps as well, they're their premium range. They're the beers which, in the supermarket, are kind of never really on offer. You always have to pay a bit of a premium for these beers because they've always got just natural ingredients and there's a lot of a extreme amount of time that goes into brewing these beers. Natural sediment in the bottle and it's the kind of, if you like, if I can call it this, the upper market beers. These beers, however, sorry, I'm going to put this Eagle IPA with that because that joins it. These three beers, however, Wells Bombardier. Water, malted barley, sugar, hops, yeast, colour, E150, stabiliser, E405. Now I'm really sure, I'm absolutely sure that this, this, this colouring in the Bombardier is not really going to harm you. We are in the deepest, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mince my words here, because I'm living through it, big time. We're in the deepest recession, forget what they say on the TV, we are in the deepest recession, probably recorded in the last 200 years. This is worse than the 1930s because we can't get out of it. We can't get out of this. We're dragging along with minimal growth. Nothing's happening. People are struggling with their finances. People can't afford to buy the, the, the most expensive beers out there. So, in order, this is my personal feeling, I really want your comments in the comments box on this because um, what I believe I'm saying is quite right, but I really want, whether you agree with what I'm saying, whether you disagree, put it in the comments box, I'll try and answer as best as I can. These beers, Bombardier English Premium, they seem to be on offer in Tesco, Sainsbury's, whether you get them for four for five pound or buy one get one free or whatever. Furnish directors as well. It's always in the offer. I buy one get one free, or, or or perhaps not buy one get one free, but buy three for four pound or three for a fiver, whatever. They always seem to be on offer. Again, with the Courage Best Bitter being rebranded, re you can probably, if you were to go to certain shops, you could probably buy this for one pound twenty, one pound ten. It gives the man on the street who is absolutely on the bare bones the chance to still enjoy a drink. If you go into a pub, it's three pound, three pound fifty a pint, they can't afford it. There's, there's still a lot of people in the world who can afford to pay two pound fifty upwards for a bottle of beer. But again, there's a lot of people who can't. They have to shop around, they have to go and buy a beer on offer. And I believe with the courage, the directors and the bombardier, is that in order to keep the prices down and in order to 
be able to get these beers made fast or whatever, get out there to the public. They've had to, they've had to mince a little bit. They've had to maybe pinch a little bit here and there. But who hasn't in this recession? Who hasn't? So what I'm trying to say is these, these, this small range of beers here from, from Wells and, and Courage. I think you're getting the drift of what I'm saying. There for the man who, who wants to look for something on offer and is <laughs> always searching for an offer and it, who is absolutely, because if we're honest, there's a lot of people out there struggling in this recession. They've had, people, have had to, people have had to change and this, believe me, I've been to a lot of um, trade shows, I've been to a lot of judging events and believe you me, there are a lot of brewers out there, an awful lot of brewers on a complete knife edge. On a complete knife edge. They are really, really struggling with this recession. And there's no, like I say, there's no point in me mincing my words. We are in the deepest recession. I'd, I'd go as far as saying recorded in the last 200 years. It is dreadful. I think again the drift of what I'm saying. There's a beer that's never on offer. That's bottle conditioned. You pay a little bit more money for it. And it's made the old fashioned way. The way real ale guy would have wanted to be made. Bottle conditioned, whatever. But then there's another side which which really it has to it has to survive. It has to you have to have a core range. And these companies are huge, absolutely huge. They cannot, they're not as flexible as a microbrewery. They cannot move as quickly as a microbrewery. They're producing millions and millions of bottles each month. They can't just say, right, we're gonna stop this because of the recession, we're gonna to have to we're gonna to have to make something else instead. You just can't do that. It takes months, months and months and months of, of, of they've got to buy order their malts, their yeast. They're barley, whatever. It's going to take a long time. You can't just go, I'm not going to brew that anymore. We're going to go for something else. It's about surviving. It's about surviving. So, please, guys. Please, I... I, I I'm, not going to, I'm, not, I'm not going to mention any names, but please. We're, let's muddle through this recession together. Like the Conservatives want us to. Um... This is a brand new beer from Wells, it's the Eagle IPA. And this hasn't got any E numbers in. But please, in the beer industry, I think we all should be really, really not be biased. I'm not saying I'm never saying to be biased, but I'm just saying please can we kinda like hmm I'm lost for words. I think you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to give this a quick rating out of 10. I'm loving the sweet malt. Dominates the drink. Not getting much hops at all. It's a British IPA. Not really going to get the hops. For me, this gets a pretty good 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. It's not a bad beard at all. Thanks for watching another edition of The Real Ale Guide. I really look forward to your comments on this. Um, subscribe if you like. Leave your comments there. Cheers.